You've been waiting for it, right? Well, it's here, the having. It's upon us in the Bitcoin community. Let's just say they're champing at the bit. And why not? Take a look at that. I think this will be the fourth run, right? The prior three all saw strong rallies over the next 12 to 18 months. Let's bring in Coin Stories podcast host Natalie Brunell. All right, Natalie, so is there a chance, though, that when this initially happens, we could actually get the old buy the rumor, sell the news kind of thing? Sure. I mean, a lot of this has been priced in, so I think we can expect short-term volatility right. as usual. But long-term, the price has been trending up. And we've actually never seen a new all-time high in a cycle prior to the next halving. So things can get a little spicy here. We've got them on the chart here. I mean, so it's, it's amazing. The first one, I mean, just it's just absolutely, it's hard not to be enticed by what we're seeing here, again, over a certain period of time. Yeah, the logarithmic chart is always really expressive of the fact that Bitcoin is just going up in one direction. But, you know, a lot of people can get kind of of confused what is the having because we've never had an asset that has this baked in reduction in the incoming supply regardless of the demand but I really think it demonstrates the elegance of this programmatic monetary policy that really is an elegant set of rules with no rulers that we all engage in and participate right. in voluntarily no one's imposing this on us right. Bitcoin is chosen by us the people and this is the core one of the core value propositions of it right uh, but I want to ask you about the last few days. Uh, Bitcoin's come down a lot. And so folks who are anti-Bitcoin are saying, hey, there you go. It was sold to us as a, as a sort of a hedge against geopolitics. And as soon as something flares up, it collapsed. What do you say to people like that? Well, you know, it's the fast money that's selling in and out of Bitcoin and creating this short-term volatility. The smart money and the permanent capital is seeking shelter in Bitcoin. And more and more investors are going to see it as this flight to safety, including when things get more and more uncertain and chaotic around us. Because Bitcoin is the one thing that is actually certain and predictable. The halving is just another example of that. It decouples the power to manipulate money from the state. Right. And it allows all of us to be in a fair competition so that real value can come to the surface. All right, Natalie, I want you to hold right there for a second because I want to get back to you in a second, but I also want to uh, bring in a friend of ours. Uh, it seems these days everyone is gold member, right? Check this out. Goldman Sachs saying gold, $2,700 an ounce this year. Now, we know, of course, emerging market central banks have been buying gold for a long time. Look at that. Go all the way back a decade or so, folks. These are central banks, not the ECB or the, or the Fed. Let's bring in Euro uh, Pacific Capital Chief Economist, also global strategist Peter Schiff. All right, Peter, gold obviously rocking. Everyone's obviously jumping on the bandwagon. The question is, why now? Why at this particular time? Well, you know, gold's probably going to close at a new record high close today. It's only a few dollars off it now, above 2370. You know, gold is rising because the dollar, the euro, uh, the yen, uh, fiat currencies are losing value. Inflation is real. It's here to stay. It's not going anywhere near the Fed's 2% target. We're headed in the wrong direction. We'll probably be in double digits by next year. And eventually, the first digit isn't going to be a one. Uh, central banks are out in front of this. They're the main buyers. You right. know, a lot of Americans have been foolishly selling their gold to buy these Bitcoin ETFs. You know, there's nothing elegant about losing your money in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not going up. In fact, Bitcoin peaked two and a half years ago at about 37 ounces of gold. As we speak now, it's worth less than 27 ounces. That's a 27 percent decline in two and a half years. This is a bear market. Right. Bitcoin is going much lower than this. If Natalie were smart, as soon as this segment is over, she would sell all of her Bitcoin. Because <laughs> if she doesn't sell it now, she's going to sell it later at a much lower all price. All right. Well, them's what we call fighting words. Uh, and I think they're similar drivers <laughs> for both. But let me introduce the two. Uh, Natalie, Natalie, meet Peter. Peter, meet Natalie. All right, Natalie, some choice words for you. What would you tell Peter? Oh, I know, Peter. And you know what? Bitcoiners don't feel the need to constantly <laughs> attack gold because we're not threatened by gold. And the reason that we have this failed fiat experiment that has impoverished our nation is because of the defects of gold. The fact that it's not easily portable. It's not easily verifiable. It doesn't offer instant final global settlement. And so you know what? Centralized authorities hijacked it. They papered over it. And we have a system of leverage and rehypothecation that hurts the working class. Bitcoin is immune to all of that. It is the savings account for billions of people that we really need and, and can most rely on. And it offers that final global <laughs> settlement that we need. And so gold is the analog version of sound money, but Bitcoin is the digital version. And that's why it's going to be the faster horse yeah. in this race. Peter? 
There's, there, there's nothing sound about Bitcoin. It's losing the race right now. Take a look at your screen. Gold is up $25, $26, and Bitcoin is getting clobbered. You know, there, there is no flaw in gold. Gold worked great for 5,000 years. The problem is the flaw is with governments. The flaw is with human beings, not with gold. Uh, but Bitcoin is, is really flawed because it doesn't have any actual value. Gold is the most useful metal on the periodic table. That's why it's money. Now, it has great characteristics that make it better money than other Peter. commodities. But absent its intrinsic right. value, it, it couldn't be money. And Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. It's well, just a digital let me jump string in one second of because, numbers. Because and any, all of this anything, is just a bunch of hype. Anything could be money, right? On the island of Yap, they used to have big stone, uh, stone money. Anything could be money uh, if people uh, use it as an exchange. And this is the thing. But that's I, because they. But, but here's the thing, though. You have to no, admit, no. Bitcoin is on the rise. Wall Street has embraced it. Uh, and this is just a tiny speck. I mean, could you imagine, could you imagine, Peter, at the rate of, of recognition, if Bitcoin keeps going at this rate, it's hard to deny it could go substantially higher. Now, I just told you, it's been dropping for two and a half years. That's when it, that, it, when just it made an its peak. High recently. And I think that decline is going to accelerate. It, 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 it does not keep going up. They suckered in a bunch of people. Wall Street didn't embrace it. They're just trying to make a buck off it. I mean, these big Wall Street firms aren't buying any Bitcoin with their own money. This is their customers' money that are dumb enough to buy it. They're just booking the bets. They're operating the casino. They're not at the blackjack tables let, or the let, roulette wheels. Natalie That's wants their to, customers that are doing that. Natalie wants to jump back in. You know, if you look at the short term, Bitcoin is going to be volatile. But if we zoom out, Bitcoin has outperformed gold. In fact, when Hamas attacked Israel, <clears> since <throat> then, Bitcoin is up 125 percent and gold is up only 27 percent. So let's really look at the numbers <laughs> well, that we're seeing. And the best thing about Bitcoin is, again, no one controls the ledger, whereas gold is really vulnerable to centralization and top down control, which is why we need a system that remember, is a neutral place I, to store your wealth. We need a neutral system Natalie, and protocol. Even Peter, Peter, why can't someone world? own Bitcoin. both? Why, why can't someone have exposure to both? Well, yeah, well, first of all, Bitcoin has outperformed everything. So don't compare it to gold. It's outperformed stocks, real estate, bonds, collectibles. That's because it's a gigantic bubble. No, if you want to own Bitcoin, I, I don't care. If you want to lose money in Bitcoin, go right ahead. It doesn't bother me. But I'm trying to help give people advice as to what to do with their money. And if they want to have an investment portfolio, Bitcoin has no part in it. But, you know, if you like gambling, if you want to take some of the money that you want, we're going to take to the racetracks or buy lottery tickets with or go to Vegas, if you want to take some of that money and gamble on Bitcoin or any of the other 20,000 cryptocurrencies that are out there, go right ahead. I mean, it doesn't bother me. But... I don't want to buy any Bitcoin. I mean, sure, had I bought Bitcoin years and years ago when I first learned about it, yeah, I could have made yeah, a lot of money yeah, selling yeah. it now you to could've. the greater fools, <laughs> right. but I didn't do that. That's something but he I'm not said on my show. He wishes he bought Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, so, so Natalie, bottom line, though, but is But I'm that... not going to buy it now. And Dude, Natalie, look. you're going to wish you sold Bitcoin. Mark my words. All right. You're going to you know, be ruining you know, the day. We, we, God, we, we take all of this stuff, Peter. If I'd only sold my Bitcoin, I'd have had a lot of money. we got 30 seconds left. i got to give Natalie the last word. I think I'm... I think the American dream has really been hijacked. We, we tried gold. It didn't work. It was papered over. That system has failed the American people. And Bitcoin does provide hope for us, the working class. We want to be able to work for something that has to be measured by a free market so that we can see real value emerge as opposed to being captured by politics and bureaucracy, which ultimately is a system that benefits the few at the, at the expense of everyone else. And it's a system in which the politically connected and the special interest groups really are at the right. top and so we need a system that is yeah. for natalie, the people bitcoin is for the people natalie thank you very much peter thank you very much